everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Bortles' it's Jaguars going up against Brady's Patriots. All right, Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about this. Seventeen yard line. On first down is Bortles. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Lee. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Black 58 rail. Black 58 rail. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. Fighting through and he's got space. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I love it. A scout told me that with his running style, this guy's always the hammer, never the nail, but also has the ability to break it off big, too. I was on the field for a game he had last year at LSU, and there were some college boys warming up. And then Leonard Fournette walked in. He is a man, full grown. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels, you know, get to linebackers. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. 
A great play there. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Jaguars drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. And he puts it through. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Set to return. This is Brandon Cooks. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call them the passing backs. They, they get them the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen. James White could have been the MVP in the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a certain quarterback that was on the field that day. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Again, it's Lewis. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Throwing his Brady on third down. Going underneath for Lewis. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his. Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Now the defense definitely showing blitz here. They'll go for it. It's Brady. That's to his running back complete. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him three on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. They'll run it now out of the gun. There he goes inside the 30. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. That's a red to run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Brady going to throw on a slant. He gets it to Gronkowski. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Brady to Gronkowski for the Patriot first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Brady to throw on second down. And that's caught by Gronk for a Pats touchdown. Ron Gronkowski, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now Bortles throwing on second down. Looking for Hearns, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Luke Bortles simply cannot keep putting his team, putting his defense in these types of predicaments. He's got to take care of the football. And last season, a lot of the turnovers, just like this one, in Jags territory, 11 of the 16 really put them in a tough spot in plus territory for the opposition. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Gronk, the tight end, in motion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets it down to the 32. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. They try again with Lewis. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. While other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football, and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He will push his way down to about the 14. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Brady's saying let's go as he'll hustle him to the line. Brady looking to throw on third and two. Dancing to his left. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Now Brady. They will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Give him a gain of four. Able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. The final shot before half for Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. He's at the 50, 30, 20, 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. That's certainly not something we see often from number 12, Tom Brady, although we did see it in Super Bowl 51. And that's why it's so memorable, because of what you just said. It doesn't happen very often. And Thiddy, but pick six? Oh, boy, you feel good about yourselves. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken from the seven. Hit with a lot of force and spun down right on the 30-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, 
Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. The familiar refrain, Brady to Gronk for the New England first. Now Lewis. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in the run game. No gain. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because... They handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Here's a carry now for Mike Gillisley. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll look. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. To throw on third down, Brady over the middle. It's Amendola. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. The Patriots pick up the first down. Brady to Amendola. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Brady now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. And this seemingly endless drive continues. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. New England on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And he's gonna get into the end zone. So cue up the Gronk spike, gets a Patriot touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. And this one through the uprights and good. separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. That'll be taken in the end zone. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made. And he goes down. It's a Patriot sack. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. 
I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. He's got Lewis. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, giving different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs for the fourth quarter. First down and ten now for the offensive group. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, it's hard to get them started again occasionally. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, Oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now Leonard Fournette, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Fournette, a first down carry. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. From the gun, it's Bortles. Underneath, Ivory. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. They'll try to run with Ivory. Good warning. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Second down, goal to go from the six. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. They come out with one back and three tight ends. So call that no gain on the sneak, and now there's still a yard short here on fourth. Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And no movement for the field goal unit to break this tie. They're going to go for this thing. Fourth and goal. Here we go. Big back Fournette, and I'm not sure he got there. 
Did they stop him? They did. Leonard Fournette denied on fourth and goal. And the Patriots get the football back. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Things on first down with Deion Lewis. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. But he picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Across the formation, he's got a man. That's Allen. A good pick up there, a 22. Might not be anyone that's run the two-minute drill better than Tom Brady's second all-time in fourth-quarter comebacks. And even though he's second all-time, it feels like first in all the most important comebacks. He's the right guy to have the ball in this situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. Seconds left to go. To throw is Brady. Dumps it off to Lewis. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Throwing now is Brady. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Second down now after the incompletion. Back to throw, Brady. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski, and it's third down. Brady to throw. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Fourth down now, and defensively, Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now, but they have to be very careful not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. The Pats do snap it. It's Brady. And Allen's got it. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 21. Brady gives this one to Lewis. And that's good for a New England first down. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the third. If the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes a downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, you remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? Well, that's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. First throw of overtime for Bortles. They'll set up the screen to Fournette. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. And give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner. Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. So here we go, first and 10 now. Left, 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 left. Here we go. Here's Ivory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have you guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. Opening drive of overtime, and now facing a third down and six. Big play coming up. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Well, I know you're toward the middle of the field here, but still, fourth down this distance, you gotta punt it right. That's definitely the first instinct, because you say, okay, let's just play some field position, make sure we don't lose the game here, turn it over in a key spot. But if you feel really good about your trigger guy, if you feel great about him, you might wanna leave the ball in his hands and let him work his magic. Bortles. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It's a gain of six on the play. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. They go back to the ground attack here. It's Ivory. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run, and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now, this would be the ninth play on this drive. Second down, here's Fournette. Evades the tackler, and now some space. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. 